I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we take a deep dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button, ring that bell, share and like the video, then of course you can stay up to date with everything that we have to offer. This is going to be your Capital Extravaganza episode, because just about every episode in the community news this week has to deal with capital ships. So there were some massive stories this week, including Ret C, including Maddie Ha, including uh, Honk, but we're gonna, we're gonna try and do this via a timeline and how these stories actually happen. So the first story that actually happened was the continuing situation between Honk and Void. And before we look into this, we have to kind of look at the past and how Honk kind of started the, uh, the war, well, in my opinion, started the war and the hostilities with Pantheon by um, camping out in a well-known gate pipe to Losek. Well, it's kind of the same thing right now with Void, where Void has basically set up shop in F7A in the Kenora pipeline. Now, this has been going on for a little while, harassing the Void members, killing their ships while they're traversing through Losek into Nullsec. But this all came to a head uh, last week when Void decided to try and hot drop on top of Void. But let's, let's take Airbus's words for it. He states, Students of history will remember a central figure in Honk's occupation of Fountain, Pillar Hammer, with his Macario gate camp to the Hop Hip Gate. Pillar lived there for months and killed hundreds of billions of Pantheon ships trying to get to or from Losek. Pantheon would ping about it regularly, and still every day battleships would get blown up, YOLOing to DK4. Sorry, D4K. Pillar took a well-deserved rest after the Pantheon War, but when he heard that there was another new giant alliance that was furious at Honk, he immediately set up camp into the Kenora Pipe. It's gone exactly the same as when he camped Fountain. Billions of Isk and Void ships flying straight into his wallet every day. They try to warn their pilots to scout. They try to bait and trap Pillar. They try uh, to tell people to use different low-sec gateways, but it never ends. It drives Void leadership crazy. So, over the last week, one Void officer, Granberia, has been trying to get Pillar by hot-dropping his carrier multibox in F7A. Uh, he got one Raven with his first drop, the next time he got Skex, which is a junior Honk member who is still learning all about Nullsec, but hadn't been able to get the famous Pillar Macario. Granberia was extremely predictable with the hot drop, so we asked some friends if they wanted to do a flip mode. They were super excited about it, and we set up, and Pillar put on his best bait show. It worked almost immediately. Granberia signed into Pillar's safe spot right into six Silent Federation capitals. Both of his Nidhoggers were melted in less than two minutes, and Honk would uh, like to note that Pillar is also Badran. See, you think I'm joking when I say that Badran is Honk's employee of the month. Well, there you go. So they did get both of these Nidhoggers, both from Catskull Cartel, which is Captain Benzie's uh, um, corporation. One for 35.5 billion and one for 34.9 billion. Now, that is all well and good. Now, there has been a response from Void in the form of an announcement. It's basically to let their pilots know that yes, F7A is still being camped, and they acknowledge the fact that they did lose two carriers. They go on to say that we know it seems that Void leadership is having issues dealing with this Hunk situation, and because of their lack of caring about Sav or about building anything in this game except contempt from their enemies, it is hard to pin down a concrete target for Void to focus PvP efforts on. However, with this new player entering the game in F7A, we are uh, we at now have a place to go roam and get some kill mills of our own. Uh, they want you to, any Void members, to contact a FC or FS regarding setting up a roam in the north uh, or to receive intel and good locations to have some fun fights. Or take it upon yourself to set up a roam yourself. They do ask that you use disposable ships because they need to get to know this new PvP area. But once you learn about how the enemy now fights and in the new areas, you can go ahead and upgrade your uh, your ships to some bigger fleets. Now, they do state that just because we have a troll issue doesn't mean we cannot still have fun in the sandbox game. Remember, if you need assistance with getting any ship back, moving materials, or making isk, Void is here to help you consume your fun. Reach out. 
They say that our silence is their strength, and our foes only cowardly share kill males they did not take part in because they don't know how to deal with the silence. Our silence allows us to respect our fellow pilots in this game. Also allows prevents uh, sorry also uh, prevents the trolls from getting fat while the void consumes all. Whether this will escalate to full on war between the void and the Sound Federation, we don't know yet. Uh, we um, we'll be keeping an eye out to see if there's going to be any hot drops into Sound Federation space or if they're just taking this directly to Honk. And speaking of Honk, they would like to ask the um, assistance of the general public, since their economists are off playing Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, They're trying to figure out the value of a Nidhogger in terms of capsular outposts. And they also want known that uh, Raid Shadow Legends has dropped their sponsorship of Honk due to allegations of toxic gameplay that damages the player base. Now that the special capital fleet that did hot drop uh, or did kill the two uh, void carriers is a special capital division from Sound Federation led by Michael JD. Okay, next we have to talk about Manny Hu's record-breaking uh, Nagelfar's uh, death mail. At this time, it is the highest legitimate uh, kill mail in the game. Now, when I say legitimate, it means he didn't have any skins, he didn't have any compressed ore sitting in the cargo. This was just straight up um, mods, the ship itself. Now, as you can see in the video, he basically jumped right into a 200 plus pilot gate camp. Now, this happened in Delve in One Tech SMEB. And as you can see, the ship was dissected with, within two minutes. Um, he did have a nice tank on there until his cap was completely nuded out. Now, the kill mail itself is for 121.3 billion isk. That's right, you have these dreads and these carriers that die that on the high side, you've seen them at around 45, 46 billion. This is 121. And the reason for that is not only the rigs, not only the, the, the hull itself, but we do have predator stasis webs. We do have uh, the predator disruptors, but we have a A-type adaptive, but we also have a X-type adaptive. Now, the the random gods that allowed him to get this must have been smiling down on him, but that luck has also reversed because that X adaptive did drop. Also, this did feature full integrated rigs on the, uh, the dreadnought as well. So a very hefty loss for Matty, but in true fashion, he just shrugs it off. Now, no less than 10 plus people had sent me this kill mail as it happened in real time. And because we're talking about Matty, who has a, a, a penchant for losing Balgorns, I did reach out to him and Zell, uh, as you remember from last week, Zell's episode, um, where he did lose his carrier as well as his Vindicator again, and how I've stated that he loses his Vindicator because he falls asleep sometimes and either gets raided or in an anomaly. So I wanted to put their kill mails or their, their lost mails side by side to see who lost the most faction ships. Now, if we are just talking about Balgorns, you can see that both uh, Zell's 16 Vindicator losses does match up with the uh, 16 Balgorn losses by Matty. However, Matty does have more losses over Zell because he also has the uh, two Macarials and a Vindicator as well as a Nightmare loss as well. So, leading the, fas the faction loss uh, race is still Matty leading the, the pack. And with Matty Hub being a kind of an official, non-official member of Red Sea, well, this can stack on the losses of that day because later on that day, Red Sea did have a major loss. Now, this fight did start off small and Red Sea does have a, let's say, a record of hot dropping their capital fleet on top of, you know, unsuspecting pilots. It's their niche. Well, the system in question was 57 Tech KJB within Fountain, and T load them in with some bait ships. And when they were in question, uh, I believe it was one or two uh, capitals from Red Sea did hot drop in. So then they had more pilots log in because it was a big log off trap, which sweetened the pot. So Red Sea dropped more, and then dropped more. And eventually at the end, when a lot of their pilots were in, that's when T gave the command 
to drop a capital fleet on top of Red Sea's capital fleet. So this was T versus Red Sea, and on the T side they had 10 dreads, 15 battleships, 6 battle cruisers, and several, you know, destroyers and cru uh, cruisers. On the Red Sea side, you had 7 dreads, 6 carriers, and several, you know, battleships, cruisers, battle cruisers, frigates. At the end of the battle, T would have lost 5 dictors, 2 hictors, and a cruiser, whereas Red Sea lost 10 capital ships, as well as two battleships, six destroyers, and three frigates. They were four carriers and six dreads. So we have a nag at 36.3 billion. We have a phoenix at 32 billion. We have a Mor uh, moros at 35.6 billion. Uh, a nidhogger at 34.2 billion. Another moros at 35.5. Another moros at 32.7. We have a chimera at 32.8. Uh, we have another Nidhogger at 35.5. We have a Thanatos at 35.3. And uh, lastly, another Moros at 35.6 billion. For basically a grand total of just capitals of around 30, uh, 345.5 billion ISK lost in this engagement. Now, I did have to reach out to both sides and see exactly what escalated this or what was the precursor to this. And I asked if there was a current war going on between Red Sea and uh, T and Cosmos. And their lead FC, Freeman, told me that it was just a bit personal, to be honest. It was no war. And just good fighting. So apparently there is some bad blood between Red Sea and T. And this started all back in January after they lost a ratting carrier to Red Sea after getting Red Sea's approval to rat with their blues. Obviously, uh, Ticos felt that they felt a little cheated uh, by this kill, so they did want to return the favor, and they held on to uh, this, this plan, uh, and, and they launched it just this past week, so they got payback with interest. In fact, at the time, on Jan in January, when this went down, uh, someone from Red Sea basically said that, that it was a ma an amazing PvP opportunity for them not to kill that riding Thanatos. And that Riding Thanatos in question was worth $41.3 billion. Now, Red Sea did not lose all their caps in this fight. Three did escape before a T Hero Dictor, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Dictor came in and bubbled the remaining fleet. Freeman said that Red Sea regularly dropped 13 caps and that they've had many roaming runs before we started this off, uh, so we know their total cap count and how reckless they are about dropping caps. They say, I guess the moral of the story is capital ships are strategic assets. We should use them with caution and with clear goal, not just a tool to show off. Now, there have been some rumors, I uh, haven't been able to substantiate, that the a lot of these caps that Red Sea, sorry, not Red Sea, uh, that um, Ticos did use in this engagement were borrowed from NEEC. And I did reach out to the leader of Red Sea and asked exactly, you know, what happened um but basically said you know i heard y'all had a bad day and uh he basically they shrugged it off with you know the the how this is a game he says i wouldn't say a bad day at all we take these hits as much as we give them and we lost today in a very well coordinated bait and i give t coast the props uh, for pulling it off as well as they did so including maddie Ha's death earlier in that day who is associated with red sea that is 11 caps down on uh, March 19th, Saturday, which will forever be known as the Saturday Slaughter. Now, before we move into our next story, I want to show you something. This is kind of a PSA, because one of these things is not like the other. That's right. So apparently, there is a fake honk out there and a fake Goose Flock Federation. Can you spot the difference? That's right. This faux honk uh, Alliance Incorporation is HQNK and all the members within actually mirror the True Honk Alliance Incorporation but it just has an underscore next to their names and the CEO is still ButtBot. Now no one truly knows who is behind this uh, some say that it is Void uh, because Honk currently is harassing Void but there is no proof we have not found any proof. I did reach out to 
Honk themselves to find out if they knew anything about it, and they do know of it, but they did say that it's not them playing a, a joke uh, on all of New Eden. So if you do see that Honk and Local, be sure to scrutinize it and to see if it's coming from a true Honk member or a funk, uh, faux Honk member. Now, as if Auxilis wasn't good enough, PM Blue went ahead and added a bounty system, a global bounty system, to this already robust app for your Discord server. The bounty system allows uh, for a mercenary corps to reward their members in contracts and ties into the Auxilis economy system. Built with feedback from Mercs, uh, and this should make determining who should get what or how far into a contract you are. The following are some options that you can choose from, such as, you know, filter by corp list, filter by location list, uh, choose whether or not to pay out, choose a max payout, or a PPK percentage. Now, to go ahead and put out a global bounty, you're going to have to reach out to PM Blue via Discord. I'll have a link to him in the description below. And he'll go out and put a global bounty on the targets with the same settings that you mentioned, that you, that you want for your target. He's going to handle all payouts via the economy app. Uh, you just have to send the ISK for him to send out. Now, he does want you to know that complete anonymity is assumed in every contract uh, regarding this. Uh, he will take a cut due to taxes as well as a partial service charge. Now, all ISK must be paid up front and people can cash out of the ISK uh, from the global economy system at any time. So that's why he needs his uh, the, your ISK at hand to pay it out himself. And if you decide to halt the contract, if you cancel, he will keep 10% of the remaining uh, for non-paid out funds. And the minimum of the bounties has to be a 200 million ISK minimum. And just here are some of the commands you can use in the new bounty system. And if you aren't familiar with the, the app itself, not only does it track kill mills as well as items in the game, it also has an economy feature which will give you uh, up to date pricing on what's going on in the market. And I don't know how much the delay is, but uh, but yeah, but this is the, the latest uh, item. Now, there is already a global bounty in the system, and that first bounty is on the space cows for a total of 6.8 billion at a 10% uh, PPK rate. Now, this has proven that Auxilis is a viable way to cause damage to your enemies. And PM Blue does want us to know that as a result of this bounty, people have assumed that Silent put out the bounty and that this proves his loyalty to Silent rather than the community. However, he does promise to take any bounty from any organization, including those that he is a part of, um, and to do so anonymously. Uh, Silent has always supported his development as a content creator as well as a developer, and he is certain that they would not take offense and would welcome the content anyways. So, basically what he's saying there, if you're an enemy of sound, go ahead and get your bounties in on them now. And, of course, if you have any questions or comments uh, about the app itself, please uh, feel free to DM him directly through uh, Discord. This week on What the Fit, we look at a specific ship class, the Exploration class. You know, you have your Exploration frigates, and, of course, you know, they only have the two mid slots, so <clears throat> they're not really useful. And you have most people using interceptors for scanning. But what about that pilot who wants to, you know, just get into the fight, do damage, and have the fun of exploration? Well, what we have right here is a model after his own heart. That's right. We have the Exploration Drake. For your uppers, you're going to have, of course, your most common. You're going to have your rapids, uh, which is perfectly fine and suited for the ship. It should be. But that's when the scanning comes into. That's right. We're going to put down the narrow resistance scanner so you can scan down your prey in your drake and shoot right to them. And size shouldn't matter, scanning res or anything like that because we have our scanning rigs attached. So th we salute an out-of-box thinker this week with the new class, the Exploration Battle Cruiser. Remember, keep looking at those uh, fits and if it makes you wonder... What the fit? Send it to me. And this week on our Corp Alliance Spotlight, we have Smug. Recently formed Pirate Alliance Smug is looking for established pirate corporations or individuals to join its ranks. As pirates, the whole map is ours for the taking. Although we already have space we call Port, where we'd like to invite you if you should decide to join us. We will never hold sovereignty. 
We don't run with doctrines. There's no taxes, no CTAs, no obligations to be on comms for the entirety of your playtime. Playing as a filthy casual is perfectly fine, and being very active is just as good. Everyone is welcome. All we ask is that you bring good banter and weave toxicity and real-life politics out of the game. We're pirates first, mercenaries second. That means that the future might hold some PPK contracts, but even during a contract, we will not be setting any corporations or alliances blue. The main objective is that everything on the map outside of the alliance is a potential target. Don't be toxic, gather salt from your enemies, but don't be an asshole. That means no racism, no homophobia, no self-harm comments, no xenophobia, you get the point basically. Any pirate or PvP corporation is welcome to apply through our Discord, which will be in the description below. Or you can contact Zliver, Noxmaster, TikTok, or Virtual PGE in-game, and they look forward to meeting you. Now, if you're not familiar with Smug, uh, their main corporation, Mug, has been on the killboards of this show basically since its inception. So, they are a great PvP organization out there to join if you are looking for that and now we come to the big kills of the week and remember all big kills must be five billion plus and we have a considerable amount of kills entered this week thank you all and it seems the flavor of this week was balgorns but let's start off with silent federation who got two macario kills one at 6.1 billion the other at 6.4 they got four balgorn kills one at 14.9 billion, one at 15.7, one at 8.6, and a lowly 6.9 billion. They also got an 11.5 billion uh, nightmare kill, and a 5.6 billion slasher to uh, interceptor kill. Hunk brings us a 9.6 billion Balgorn kill. The Space Cows give us a 11.2 billion Wreath 2 kill. No Police Stop gives us a 10.5 billion Dominic's kill. Five Balgorn kills, one at 7.2 billion, one at 6.7, one at 7.4, one at 7.3, and the last at 12.7. They also got a 6.9 billion Orthrus kill, a 6.4 billion Badger 2 kill, a 5.5 billion Apoc Striker kill, and I love this one, the 17.7 billion Bargus kill. Two Macarios, one at 5.4, the other at 6.7. A Raven Striker at 5.2, a 5 billion Rattlesnake kill, and a 5.6 Vindicator kill to round it all out. Red Scorpions gives us a 7.9 billion Nightmare kill. Copitium Inc. KOP gives us a 8.3 billion Vindicator kill. Dracken Boot gives us a 6.3 billion Balgorn kill. Smug gives us three Balgorn kills. Two at 6.8 billion each, and the last at 7.2 billion. Genesis gives us three Vindicator kills, one at 5 billion, one at 5.5, and the other at 5.6. Two Balgorns, one at 6.4, the other at 6.7. A 13.1 billion Macario kill, and a 5 billion Rattlesnake kill. T Cosmos gives us uh, two Macario kills, one at 5.2 billion. The other at 12.3. They also give us a 12.1 billion Vindicator kill. Myth gives us a 5.1 billion Rattlesnake kill. Two Vindicators, one at 5.6, the other at 5.4. They gives us two Nightmare kills, one at 6.1, one at 5.6. Brave Old Schools gives us a 9.6 billion Rattlesnake kill. And lastly, a 5.7 Orthrus kill. Now we come to the capital kills of the week. Now these are capitals that were not in the previous stories that we aired just a little while ago. Uh, the first one is from Silent Federation, uh, specifically uh, Beasts of the South, with a 36.3 billion Nidhogger kill. Next week from Providence and the Poverty Block, uh, the Poverty Block, we have Serenity giving us a 3. Point, sorry, 31.8 billion uh, Nagelfar kill. And of course, now we come to everyone's favorite part of the show and a chance to win a free Omega combo. These are your solo kills of the week. The first in the industrial category is Dobie Goodwin uh, with a 689 million procurer kill. Hello Human with a 1.1 billion venture 4 kill. 
Yara Yarek with a 3.3 billion Badger 2 kill. And M1A1 with an impressive 14.8 billion Corporation Citadel kill. Now, I did talk to him. He said that this took seven hours to kill Solo. So congratulations, all that work, and you got yourself a free Omega combo. Now heading up to the PvP category, we have Barnacles UK with a 458 million Corex Assault kill. We have uh, JCL Cool Runner 04 with a 1.4 billion Slasher 2 Interceptor kill. We have Baron Romer with a, wait for it, 1.5 billion Velator kill. That's right, a Velator. We have uh, Guck Bazip with a 1.6 billion Succubus kill. Scout with a 2.2 billion Bellicose 3 covered ops kill. Uh, Touche with a 3.3 billion Hyperion kill. Lazy B Willy with a 4.7 billion Stratios kill. The minivan gives us a 5.6 billion Apoc Striker kill. And the winner this week is Shirika Dario with a 10.3 billion Rattlesnake kill. Yes, this man is dangerous in a worm. Uh, but congratulations, uh, both uh, Sharika as well as M1A1 on your kills as well as your free Omega combo. Be sure to get with me on Discord to uh, see how you get your prize. Now, if you need more news in your life, I got a couple spots for you to go to. The first is Sky News, Russia's premier Eve Echoes outlet for all your Eve Echoes news. Don't worry, all the videos will be subtitled in English. Also, you have the legend himself, Rambo, with the Echoes of New Eden podcast with his co-host, Taylor. It's a great time to be had. If you want to be part of the live audience, just jump onto their Discord server every Thursday night, and you can be part of the show as well. Also, the Auxilis app, PM Blue, the Blue Bulletin. Uh, he gives us a few videos each week, powered by the Auxilis app itself, as well as the New Eden Radio Discord where they have multiple shows during the week. It's a great time had by all. And that's about going to do it for me. But before I go, I'm going to do my send-off. But at the end, there is a song that an Alliance mate, uh, his girlfriend, wrote. It's a dubstep song talking about everyone's favorite uh, patch note detail. So for me, have a great week. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Friday with the game news. And, uh, you know, we are all one vision, one purpose. One front. Enjoy the music. Prices based on successful transactions in the market. Update estimated prices based on successful transactions in the market. Update estimated prices based on successful transactions in the market.